We're at the Ombi headquarters on the Gold Coast of Australia, and today we are going to be talking about waves. So who better to talk to you about waves than the guys from Surf Lakes who have developed the most incredible wave. So we're gonna head over and go see Kit from Surf Lakes. So follow me. As you can see, don't have to travel too far, and we're at Surf Lakes. Right, so they've got a real cool setup over here. With all the boards on display. Hey Kit. Hey mate, good How to see you. So this is the, uh, the Surf Lakes office. I have to give full credit to, to Aaron and his original vision. It's, it's scary how close his, his original um, vision was that's actually been realized. And now he saw that from the very beginning. Was he, he could see that you've got 360 degree um, of waves radiating out from the center and you can catch that wave at multiple points around the pool and provide multiple different waves. So full credit to him. He's, he saw that from early on and that was always the goal. And that, kind of carries over in our, our motto, everyone gets a break. To have an ocean like wave, you've got to you know, have the water move the same way an ocean wave is. And so the particle motion is all the tool, you've got a trough before the waves. But you know, all of that science speak about how the wave forms and how it tumbles and what have you. Yeah, it's all there, but you gotta look at how, it's, how the wave is generated, where it comes from. And obviously, if you replicate what happens in nature, then you'll get the same result as nature. We're not creating waves by being a storm out in the ocean thousands of kilometers away. That's how nature does it. So that aside, everything beyond that is basically exactly like nature. So yeah, the, the source of the swell is a little bit different, obviously, but from that point on, everything is exactly the same. And to me, that's the, the key thing. That's how you're gonna get the same result. Yeah. So as long as you have an, a wave in deep water that is formed to the same profile, same shape as an ocean going wave, if you give it shallow water and a reef and a correct shaped reef to break over, you're gonna get an ocean like wave. And so that's, that is really in the end is what it is. We don't continually push the wave and keep adding energy to the wave. We create a swell and it travels in deep water and then we give it a reef to break over. And so that is how you get all the fancy things like the particle motion and the trough. The other key factor is the reef that you give it to break over. We have one swell, let's say it's just one ground swell that's coming in at this time, and then we give it different reefs to break over, and we have it coming out of deep water into shallow water at different rates. So like a, a wave like Tahiti. I'm not gonna compare our wave to, to Chalpa or, or anything, you know, it's, uh, that's not fair, but you know, that wave comes out of deep water and ledges really fast, and you know, the, the symmetry of how it hits and what have you is, is why you get that really slabbing wave. On a smaller scale, we do that with our slab. You know, it actually comes out of significantly deep water and hits a ledge really abruptly. But then we have other waves around the lake that have more gradual inclines that can up, come up to them. They allow the wave to stand up and um, form a different shape rather than really unloading on itself. Um, to the extent that our beach break wave, um, it travels quite a long distance from the machine and feels the bottom for quite a long time before it breaks. And so you get a you know, wildly different um, rate of peel, you get different um, way the trough affects the wave, but all of those are basically how nature does it. You know, they, if you take the source of the wave, the generation of the wave out of the picture, everything downstream of that is exactly like nature. One of the beauties of, of the technology is that you can have everyone having a go at the same time. You don't have to turn up for a certain time of day that we're running a certain type of wave. So all just go all at the same time off the same swell line. We cycle people through the waves. When you're sitting in the channel, you're actually an observer for a set wave for the next set of waves coming through and you get to see two breaks from where you are in the channel. You've actually looked at the you know, right-hander on that one and the left-hander on that one. So it's kind of like you're paddling back out at the reef pass and watching your mate getting barreled past you and maybe plan how you're going to approach it. You're like, oh, okay, here, I reckon if I, when I go, I might bottom turn there. And you know, like, yeah, it's just, you're totally immersed in it. You know, watching surfing on the TV is fun enough. Sitting in the channel next to a peeling, barreling wave, you're hooting. Watch, you know, people you don't know, you're hooting at them. They've just got barreled and you know your, your one's coming. It's guaranteed, you know, that's, that's the coolest thing. It allows you to, let loose and enjoy watching other people get their waves because you know you're getting yours. This is a, a full 3D representation of our, of our lake. We um, model this in computer software and simulate waves breaking over it. And so this basically shows, a, you know, and it's evident from all the video you see, we have this deep channels. Once again, replicating nature. 
So the way we have it is we have the tips of A-frame reefs and we provide a central swell in deep water and that radiates out in all directions and it comes out of significantly deep water and hits shallow water at, at different rates depending on which reef it hits. And so then you get an A-frame break, breaking off each, each side of the reef. So for example, this one here, you can see how it's very abrupt and, and pointy. That one is our slab wave, it's called the island. So it really comes out of shallow water and loads up and you get not much back on the wave, it's, it's a full slab. Whereas um, a wave over here, it's much more gradual and uh, travels a, a fair bit further. There's all sorts of um, contours that we, we put into it. But that's how you do it. You have one perfect swell line and then you provide a different reef for different, different breaks. And so that is pretty much, imagine a perfect ground swell coming out of the ocean. That's what you want, that's the ideal. A, a nice ruler edge line. What you do with that swell, what reef it hits and how it breaks, that's the quality of the wave you get. And so the interesting thing is that we have a, it's essentially a circular wave. So in that respect, it's, it's very different than nature. But the reefs that we put in are designed to break for that wave. Um, if you put these reefs in nature, they probably wouldn't work because waves in, in nature are straighter. They still refract and they curve and bend, but they're not a tight circle like ours. Mm. So if you stuck one of these reefs out in, at your local break, it probably wouldn't work. The peel angle would be wrong or the speed would be wrong or, you know, we've designed them to match the curvature of our wave. And what we actually see, and this is very evident from the drone shots from above, is the wave comes out as a circular swell and then it refracts and breaks and the whole thing turns into a square or a rectangle looking from above because it, it um, yeah. bends back on itself so much. That's right. And you actually get what every surfer chases, which is a shoulder that bends towards you and you know that heaps of power out on the shoulder that you can go and actually turn. You can turn in the pocket or you can cut back. The power region of the wave isn't just this tiny little sweet spot. There's you know, it's everywhere there. It's got a lot of push down the line. I mean, of course, we all want to turn in the pocket, but the, the great thing about an ocean wave is there's plenty of power out, you know, on the shoulder or down the line, or, you know, you can tap into that. That was actually a surprise. As, as we thought early on, oh, it's one thing we came across where we were like, oh, you know, how much are we going to be able to get the wave bend? It bends so much more than we expected, at least myself, um, that's, you know, it actually we can bend it more than we needed to. And so we, you know, take the angle back so that it peels just right. Wow. And then the other dynamics of it are basically replicating nature on a, on a smaller scale. We have the deep channels. So we have the A-frame reefs and it breaks down it and then the water returns via the channels. And that's the same as a deep channel and a reef pass, you know, yeah. the water doesn't suck back through the wave break, it directs out through the channel. A lot of those, them, or every other wave pool technology, to my knowledge, are they're directional. The waves kind of only go in one or maybe two directions. So all that wave energy is disappearing in one direction. What's gonna happen? It's gonna come back. Correct, you know, yeah. Whereas ours are directing out 360 degrees and then all di directing back to each other. So there's a lot of wave cancellation. So it's all concentric. Waves go out and then return water comes back in. So you get cancellation of flows. And then the other huge thing is that we have a big lake. So we get a lot of, a lot of time for it to settle. And you know, once again, other, other technologies, um, by nature of only having a couple of breaks or a couple of waves, they, they try and run many, many waves in a row. So the never ending set, you know, it's where does all that water go? Where does all the turbulence, when, when does it ever have time to settle? In nature, five, six waves set, and we love it when there's, you know, five or six waves in a set. It's not, not often more than that, you know, and quite often less than that. And then the, the ocean goes flat and, you know, everyone gets to paddle back out and get back into position. And then the next set comes through. We replicate that as well, you know, because we have so many waves all breaking at one time, we can make a lot of surfers happy. Then we can take a break and let the, and we do. We take a, a break between sets to let it all settle, recharge the, um, the air in our compressed air system, and then ready to go again with a nice still lake and everyone gets a, a, a nice clean wave. So that kind of gels with the whole sticking close to the way nature works. It's just, it feels natural, you know. I've, I have been caught with, the, you know, what seems like the never ending set out in nature where you're duck diving a million times, but it's not often that it's like that, you know, and when it is, it's usually a mess. So, so on the period type of thing, it's, that's an interesting one because the period of our, of our waves is around the six second period. And so a, a surfer would go, oh, that sounds like 
choppy wind swell because in nature a short period swell means local storms, means the waves haven't had time to organise themselves and travel over a long distance. So the correlation is short period swell means bad waves. Yep. Our waves are not made by a storm. So, you know, six seconds is a perfect time. It is enough time, more than enough time, because you know where to sit. You don't, you know, you're not trying to chase a shifty beach break. You know where to sit, so six seconds is plenty of time to turn and go between waves. And um, so, you know, that actually doesn't correlate to uh, in the same way that, you know, six seconds in the ocean does. You just have to provide the same ingredients that happen in nature. You know, provide a, a swell which is a, you know, the same as a natural swell. Give it a reef which is the same as the natural reef. reef. We can control the tide level, you know. It's, n it's never, the tide's never too low or too high. It's yeah. always just right. You know, so we, we provide the right swell, provide the right bottom, provide the right tide. We even can, most of the time, conjure up the right wind because our lake is full up 360 degrees. So at least half the breaks are, are offshore or some variety of offshore and even the ones that are on the other side. Um, the wave doesn't travel long enough for the onshore wind to really mess with it and it's sheltered by the machine. So even on the onshore side of the lake, it's always completely surfable. So, you know, you're controlling all those variables, but you're providing the same variables that would pre produce a good wave in the ocean. So the simplified answer is it's going to be a good wave. Waves um, that are allowed to form their natural shape and travel and then come out of deep water into shallow water across a reef, which is optimised for their breaking. That's what all classic surf spots have, you know. I mean, you can contrast that with a, with a beach break. Yeah, we all love beach breaks, but are they consistent or like, you know, you have different swell angles and ever-changing sand bottom. It can be amazing or it can be terrible. That's the total, total other end of the spectrum. Or you can have your classic reef break where, you know, if you get, oh, that's like why we all love Indonesia is, you know, that has, the swells get so far to travel across the Indian Ocean that they have a lot of time to be really nice and ruler edge. And then you give a perfect coral reef um, to break over, you know, with the trade winds on offshore, you know, like it, it's perfect. <laughs> yeah. So it's how do you replicate that in a man-made environment and in a tight space? Because, you know, we don't have thousands of kilometres for waves to travel, we don't, you know. Yeah. Um, so we've managed to, we've, we've got significantly deep water coming into shallow water um, with the right shaped reefs and, and you get that draw in the wave, you get that oh, just, you know, hollow suck when you bottom turn it slingshots you back up to the lip like a real wave does. There's, the power's all in the right place. So, very happy. Stoked. <laughs> yeah. Thank you awesome, so mate. much. Great yeah, job. great to see you, mate. Thanks for coming in.